Remember when you couldn't order a ride at the press of a button? Or get online without hearing this? Or get Domino's delivered to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations? Wait, what? Introducing Domino's Hotspots. You can finally get pizza delivered right to the beach, the quad, or the dog park. Not at home? Not a problem. Find a Domino's Hotspot near you and get two medium, two-topping pizzas delivered for $5.99 each. Two at a minimum handmade pan pizzas will be extra asked for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. This is the best of Golick and Wingo podcast. Trying to get your Monday morning off to a nice, easy flow. Glad you're with us. Golick and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line. Mike Golick, Trey Wingo here with you. Good morning. Good morning. How was your weekend? The weekend, uh, it was somewhat of a relaxing weekend because from now on... That's not going to happen. The relaxing weekends... Yeah. Though in a good way, yeah. uh, are over, you know, yeah. as we start college football, the NFL getting ready to go. So it, uh, as we know here at ESPN, yeah. once football gets going, and I know it's been going for a couple of weeks now with the preseason and getting ready for college ball, it's, uh, it, it's, it's ready to go. Yeah, that's that time of year. Yeah, so so everybody, time. I always, yeah. you, I always put this tweet out at the, uh, at the end of the summer, uh, right around the Labor Day weekend, specifically regarding the football. I say, dear significant others, Whatever you need yeah. your significant other to do, get it done this weekend. Yeah, exactly. Because after this, probably not going to be very productive yeah. on Saturdays we're, and Sundays. We're going to see. Forward. We're going to see in February. Is yeah. what we're going to do. Exactly. Exactly. See you in twenty four yeah. weeks. How's your weekend? It was All really good? good. Really good. Went yeah. to uh, went up to a little town in Connecticut called Stonington, right on right, the water, right. with some friends of ours. Played a little golf. I was hoping to see you on the golf course. Did not see you. Did, you did not see me, and you probably won't see me. Yeah, so. it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. How- Kind of how it works. We'll keep trying. You know, I, I guess before there's a ton to get into. But, there is. You know, as we were just just chatting horrifically about before the show. I mean, what a our, our I, we'd be remiss to not start with our thoughts and prayers out to the families of the of the people that were killed at, at the. At, who would have? I mean, you want to talk about one yeah. of the most bizarre headlines? A shooting at the Madden 19 event. I mean, yeah. you're, you're you're video gaming a tournament down in Jacksonville and. uh Someone there went on a, a mass shooting spree, and two people were dead, and then also the suspect himself had a self-inflicted wound. Eleven victims are in stable condition. Nine uh, were taken there by ambul- ambulance. A couple drove themselves. Uh, more people that were shot and that are recovering. I mean, that was just one of the more stunning headlines. I guess nothing's too stunning anymore. No. But, uh, in, in and that's a, in the a, worst part about it. In a bad it. way, but that one did. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Obviously, statement from EA Sports and Shad Connor or Jacksonville has happened, as I said, down in Jacksonville, right in the area we were down there when the Super Bowl was down there. Super uh, just Bowl 39. A, just a horrible, horrible situation at this gaming tournament uh, with this, uh, this, this person just start shooting. So again, thoughts and families, uh, to, especially for the for the two that that were uh, were killed again, the suspect then uh, became Took a third one himself, that died yeah. and turned the gun on himself. But the two that were killed in, in just uh, nonsensical, just ridiculous, and then all of us that were injured as well. That our thoughts are certainly with them as as much as can, can be. Yeah, look, I you know I've done a lot of work with EA in the Madden game over the years. So as soon as I saw that, I just texted a bunch of people that I knew, and thankfully everybody was okay. And you know, but just the last thing you would think that was going to happen. That's exactly right. I mean, like you that. were talking about things that. I mean, so many things that you say, my God, that just doesn't make sense. And yeah. this certainly falls into that category. And unfortunately, people's lives change forever uh, in this one. And it, uh, it, it's just a shame. It's just a shame. So, again, all we can do is offer our, our thoughts and prayers. And, and again, uh, we will uh, continue to uh, monitor that. But we will right. also just say, you know what, let's, let's hope that uh, from people that maybe shook up by that, that's where sports sometimes can be a, a great escape for them right. and get back into to some things that they, uh, they'd they rather be thinking about than that. So we, we will do that here on Golik and Wingo on a Monday morning. We will start with what's trending and is it possible, is it possible, Mike, that the Red Sox, all this time we're talking about them running away with all these records, the lead is down to six in the AL East. Luke Voigt, three for three with a two-run homer to help Luis Severino earn his major league leading 17th win. And the Yankees beat the Orioles five to three on Sunday night baseball. Uh, by the way, they're going for the four game sweep tonight on ESPN and on ESPN radio. The Yankees are only down by six in the AL East now. Remember, it was what, nine and a half? We're like, it's yep. over whenever there was a run. It's but still kind of over. I think it is as well, but it's, it's making it at least a little more fun to talk about. Yep. Boston has what lost six of their last eight right in that area there. They have not been playing well. Chris Sale, you know, with that shoulder, how is that going to be by the time the playoffs roll around? 
So I, I listen. You don't think they're going to catch him? I don't think they're going to catch him. But just for fun, make them think about looking it. Looking at the rest of the schedule, yeah. As far as other playoff teams that they both play, the the Yankees uh, play three at Oakland still this year, and then they have the six against Boston. Wait, so, did you say they have six against Boston? Six against Boston. And what's the lead? Six. Hmm. Now the last hmm. now the last time these three played in a series, Boston swept them. So Correct. you know th- th- that's why we don't think it's going to happen, but. For Boston's side of it, outside of the sixth with the Yankees, and oh, by the way, those last three are in Boston, Boston also plays three at Atlanta, three home to Houston, yep. and three at Cleveland. Yep. Or Cleveland took the first two games of their series, I think it was, what was it, last week or yeah. whatever. Yeah, last week. So Cleveland, went Boston, in, Cleveland handled their business Boston's against the Boston's got Sox. Some, some tough teams coming up, and they're not playing their best, so... I just bring that up of, of making it a little more interesting. If so, you're saying there's a chance. Exactly. But listen, six games back by my math, even you can do this math, is better than nine and a half games back. By three so and a half games. The Yankees are trending in the right direction, but I think we both think Boston is going to hang on and the Yankees will be playing either uh, Houston or the A's, whichever team ends up being the other wild card I, there. I can't believe you brought up math. It was my understanding that there would be no math. This was easy math. It doesn't matter. Six games back is better than nine and a half back, right? Yes. Okay. I don't like math. I'm trying to I'm trying to spoon feed you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a baby? There you go. Well, congratulations. Oh, no. Because today is the nine-month anniversary of this show. Mike, we have made a baby. Don't ever say <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hold on. Congratulations. It's been nine months. Are you one of those that, that celebrated along with no. when you were dating your wife? Hey, no. we've been dating for three months. No. We've been dating for four and a half no. months. No. We've been dating for 63 days. No. no. Okay. No. But then anyway, why did you bring this up? Happy baby day. <laughs> Congratulations. Speaking of baseball, Kendris Morales wow. swatted his way to the brink of baseball history Sunday. By the way, swatted? Is a term we don't use enough. No, that's true. Swat you swat flies, don't you? <laughs> yes. Well, Babe Ruth back in the day was the Sultan of Swat. Mm-hmm. Swat sounds like blather or balderdash. It does. You're it right. Does. Or swat. poppycock. He swatted away to the brink of baseball history. The Blue Jays uh, slugger homered in a franchise record seventh consecutive game mm-hmm. in Toronto's eight three loss to the Phillies. Seven play. He's the seventh player to do that now. As far as he's one short of the record, which has three people involved in that, Dale Long, Ken Griffey Jr., and Don Mattingly. Yeah, baby. So that's what Morales is trying to go for. You know, that's what you start to look for for most teams now is the individual things because as a team, they're sitting there at 60 and 70, 29 games out of first place. So there's nothing else to really talk about uh, for them. But uh, let's see if he can get it. Let's, Let's see if he can get number eight. And get in that group and make it a group of four that have gone eight in a row. You know, it's interesting. I, I must say, and Brett will chime in, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, I don't know Together. a ton about Dale Long or the Pirates. Yeah. But I know that Don Mattingly was a really good player. Yeah. And Ken Griffey Jr. was a really good player. Yes, he was. Uh, so that, that's pretty good company to be in. Brad, do your research. Give me. I want all the day along. We had Henry. Let's we break had, down day along. We had we Henry had Hooper, Hooper. We had Henry Hooper. Hoops. We had Harry Hooper day. Harry Hooper, right? So let's uh, let's 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 get this all about day along. I yeah. want more day along now than we could possibly again, ever imagine. Hoops was born in what like eighteen seventy nine or something like that. So yes. Dale was born, you know, a little bit later than that. Yes, Hooper. By the way, Hooper. by the way, Hooper. Kendris Morales has been in the zone this week. In the zone, brought to you by AutoZone. Get in the zone, AutoZone. No else was in the zone? Oh, boy. Bryson DeChambeau. Cruz to a four-stroke win at the Northern Trust, the first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs on the PGA Tour. DeChambeau now sits atop the FedEx standings, but his mind was also on impressing U.S. Ryder Cup captain Jim Fury. Jimmy! Furzy, Jimbo! Jimmy! DeChambeau narrowly missed, earning one of the eight automatic bursts for the U.S. team when he missed the cut at the PGA Championship. Uh, Jim Fury will make... Three of his four captains picks a week from Tuesday. So I'm going to ask you a, a question in a second about this, but DeChambeau yeah. really did this on Saturday when he fired a 63, Absolutely. put himself in that last, Keegan Bradley shot a 62, by the way, to put himself in the final group. And then Keegan Bradley went on to shoot a 78 <laughs> yesterday. Bad. Uh, where DeChambeau shot a 69. So 16 strokes differently and from one day to the next. Is exactly right. So he had the four stroke lead. He held on to that four stroke lead. Tony Finau shoots a 68, jumps up. He ends up in second place in here. Uh, Tiger Wood shoots a one under, uh, what was it, 70 yeah. in this one. Just, just, I mean, it was couldn't a, putt. the drive in the PGA and couldn't putt here. So uh, let me ask you, we know the eight yeah. that are locks for the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Who are the other four in your mind that you think, you think it's over? I, I think it's pretty much over. Okay. Who are they? Well, DeChambeau is ninth. He wins and, 
He's in. He's going to be in. By the way, 24 year old. To to that point, this was DeChambeau on SportsCenter last night talking about not only win, but this little thing called the Ryder Cup. I I feel really good, but at the same point in time, I got to go play well next week. We still got one more week before he announces uh, some picks, and I got to go play well. That's all I can say. All right, where's your confidence level about making that team? My confidence level? Well, I don't want to give away too much, but it's pretty darn high. Definitely, uh, you know, in the upper upper eighty percent, probably. Um, but you never know. Wow, he went with a number. Well, that's who he is. I mean, D. Shibbo yeah. was a guy that tried to use the compass, not the protractor, not the protractor, but the, the compass. compass to read the green. So he went a number. He's all about the map. He went high eighties. Yeah, he's making. So you think it's a hundred percent? I think he's look. He okay. was ninth. So and the top eight made it. He wins a FedEx Cup uh, event. He's right. in. Okay, so he's in. Yeah. So we got three more. T- tenth place is Phil Mickelson. He's making the team. He's in. He did, he did pretty well in this. He, he ended up uh, tied for 15th, 9 yeah. under. Uh, 11th place is Tiger Woods Tiger in the Woods. point standings. He's making the team. He Tiger's in. So 12th is so, Xander Shoffley, okay. uh, who's played pretty well this year. You don't think he's in? I don't think he's in. Who do you think is in? I think our guy is in, Tony Finau. Tony Finau? I, and by the way, Tony will join us next hour. We'll talk to him and we'll try and, we'll try and get him out we, of here. Let's see if we can get a number out of him. Yeah, exactly. Like, like uh, DeChambeau went up or 80%. Look, Tony Fino is a birdie machine. Where is he in the standing? I think he's 15. 15. I know he started the week at 15th. I don't know if he went up or, or not. Well, uh, it, it's, they, they only do the points for, for the race to the top. Oh, so, okay. Top eight. All right. So that's not going to change. Um, oh, I was I was thinking yeah. FedEx. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, exactly. I had the FedEx and the Ryder Cup. Finau points, is fifteenth right now. So again, De- stop it. I don't care. Uh, DeChambeau is ninth. He's making the team. Nicholson right. is tenth. He's making the team. Shut up, Stanzik. Uh, Tiger's eleventh. He's making the team. Shoffley is twelfth, and that you know you take twelve. So who's twelve? Who's up in front of Finau? Kuchar, Mark, Matt Kuchar is thirteenth. Uh-huh. Now Kevin Kisner is interesting. He's fourteenth. And Kisner has played really well in a couple of majors, and he keeps the ball in play. But we're going with Finau. Look, in, ma- with our in match play, if you can make birdies from anywhere, that's important. Because remember, in stroke play, it's like one uh, one bad hole and you could be out of the tournament. In match play, it doesn't matter. It's just one hole. Right. I can go back the next time, make a birdie or an eagle and so, win it. So let's go look in Wingo. Let's put it in stone. Yeah. Where the Ryder Cup team is set. I think that's, I think it's, it's set. set. You can book it. Book it. I, I book think, it. I think we have you booked the book team. It. I, think it, I think the, the four captain's picks, and I don't know in what order, are going to be DeChambeau, Mickelson, Tiger, and Tony Fina. All right, there it is. There, there it's a go. Golik and Wingo Ryder Cup team. There you go. You we're, can book it. And we you are going to we're going to congratulate Tony Fina. Yes, we on are. The yes, team we are. When he joins us at seven o'clock. Oh, is he going to hate us if he doesn't? Probably. <laughs> Jimbo, Jimmy, yeah, Jimbo, come on, Jersey, come on. So anyway, we, we've got it set, but officially it'll be announced later. Right. And by the way, speaking of majors, tennis's final major of the season begins today on ESPN with the U.S. Open. Serena Williams seeks her 24th major title to tie Margaret Court for the most all-time, while Roger Federer looks to break a tie with Pete Sampras and Jimmy Connors for the most U.S. Open titles in the Open era since 1968. But he hasn't won this thing nope. since 2009. So, I mean, I think you're much more likely to maybe see a, a Novak Djokovic yeah. uh, or maybe a Rafa Nadal, the defending champ. And on Serena's side, we, we keep saying, boy, if anybody's going to come back after having the baby you know, and, yeah. and reestablish, it's going to be her and... More that, baby talk. It, it, More baby talk on the show yeah, today. It, it hasn't gone quite that way yeah, uh, as far as the while. majors, even in regular tournaments when she got smoked in the first round yep. uh, of a tournament. So not worst not, loss of her career. Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll see where she is right now. And we'll have a Marty Fish, uh, one of our great ESPN ten, tennis analysts, on with us a little later in the hour. Talk a little tennis and also oh, talk about a big bar tab. Which he was in a great situation. It was well. He's the most interesting yes, man in America. Is. That's yes, all he, he does is, is traipse yeah. around with He'll other athletes and one. have great stories. So we'll get to all of that, mm-hmm. but again, Golik and Wingo was presented by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more at Progressive.com. Mike, we are very close to the real deal. Oh, the start of the NFL season, and it was the dress rehearsal in a lot of ways uh, for the uh, starters, and we had some updates on some rookie quarterbacks over the weekend. Some did well, some did not do well, and some didn't play at all. Well, let's start with last night. In case anybody didn't know, there were actually two games yesterday. There was a game in the afternoon, 4 o'clock game, and then a night game, an 8, 8.30 game, uh, that involved two rookie quarterbacks. We'll get the latest, uh, the, the later one out of the way. Josh Rosen did not play in this game. He had a hurt finger, so he did not play, so nothing new there. Sam Bradford is going to be the starter, I believe, certainly when the season starts there with Rosen uh, ready to come in. Uh, we'll see. Again, Mike Glennon is there. Uh, as well. If those remember, Mike Glennon started a couple games in Chicago last year and then was a $16 million backup to Mitch Trubisky. The other rookie that played, 
and had a chance, it does seem to be open there, is uh, Josh Allen. The Bills played the Cincinnati Bengals. And, boy, what it's going to turn out for the Bills, Trey, is who can move the best because their old line is, is, is in trouble. It isn't good. Listen, they lost two big-time players. Eric Wood, when he was healthy, was, was one of the top centers. And then left guard, listen, we, we hope all is good with the going forward in life for Richie Incognito. But as far as a left guard, he had been playing pretty well, and and he was a Pro Bowl level a couple years ago, maybe not so much last year, but still those two guys, the two guys in for them, are not at their level. So that's hurting in the interior of that line. Get to my level! Uh, Josh Allen, I mean, it, it, things did not go very well for Josh Allen. 6-12 to 12 for 34 yards, but he was sacked five times. There was somebody in his face the whole Time And this is when the starters were playing the starters. That's what you had to start looking yep. at a little more this week, even though there were some teams that didn't play their starters. Nathan Peterman came in, and he looked sharp. He's looked sharp all preseason. He's making a great case to say, why not me, why not now? But again, he played against the second unit uh, in this one. But it will be interesting. Who can move the best? Because that old line is struggling right now. Yeah. They don't have a great running game, and that old line is struggling some. So you may need a guy who can move and get out of there. Allen is a good athlete in moving around, but he also he does hold the ball a little bit. The big kid loves to stand in the pocket and fire it. When he gets on the move, he's a good athlete. But it's it, it's going to be a tough go. I mean, and then and then AJ McCarron. Yeah. I mean, you know where where. He's, you know, coming off that shoulder injury was only going to be an emergency quarterback yesterday, so he didn't play. They they have some issues there on who to start because of the issues around surrounding that the quarterback on offense. And remember, uh, Josh Allen had to leave that game when he, his head got slammed into the turf mm-hmm. for a while, and he he did come back. Uh, you know, Josh has a chance. I think he still has a chance to be the starter week one. And here was Josh basically grading his performance after the game. You know, I didn't do a good good enough job of getting the ball out on time and getting it to our playmakers and you know holding on to the ball is uh not going to be too great most of the time so i got to do a better job but there's a lot to learn from a lot to get better from obviously it didn't play as well as i wanted to uh there's some throws out there that i wish i had back some plays out there that i wish i had back but obviously it's it's the preseason that's why we're playing these games is to learn and grow and get better and this is one of those games where we're going to go in and break down the film and uh get a lot better at just because of the things that we had to endure and things that we saw and you know this is going to help us out in the long run Josh, physically, how do you feel after taking that, that hard hit to your head there? I know you were clear to return. Oh, yeah. How do you feel physically? Hey, it's football. It's football. you got to love those hits. You know, sometimes getting those out of the way in the preseason is its not a fun thing, but it's uh, good to get those over with. So definitely feel good. And there's loving hits and then maybe getting hit too much. I, you know yeah. what? Quite, quite honestly, Trey, I'm not sure what you do here. The, the, the team, let's be honest, is is not very good. Uh, no. especially offensively. You know, it's funny we're saying this, too, because Buffalo is like, wait a minute, we made the playoffs last year for the first time since the Paleozoic era, yeah. and now everybody's basically saying, yeah, they're going to be terrible this yeah, year. Yeah, I do like their secondary yeah. on defense, but we're talking about the offensive uh, side of the ball. So, I mean, do you start the young player in, in Allen, the, the one that said most said wasn't going to be ready, and you watched him play. He had some, some nice passes, but then others that were just flat out off the mark, which has been the M.O. of him coming out of college. You play Peterman, who's looked the best in the preseason, or or McCarron, who comes over from Cincinnati. I mean, I, I'm still not sure where you go if you just throw your hands up and say, let's just give the rookie some time here. Any quarterback that's in there, they're going to get hit, though. They're, yeah. they're going to have to deal with a, a system, uh, depending on the play calls out there and how quick you can get rid of the ball, they're going to get hit. You know, it's interesting. You and I, Mike, when the draft uh, came and went in April, we both sort of were of the opinion that uh, – when push comes to shove, the quarterback in this draft that might have the most long-term success might be Josh Rosen. Yeah. Uh, and he's the one that has no chance to start week one. Uh, I, I, did he even play last No, week? no, yeah. I said he didn't play. He had yeah, a finger. Yeah, he hurt his yeah. finger, so he did not he play. He had a finger. Hopefully yeah. he has 10. Yeah, uh, he, he had a finger, so he did not play. But, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. I, we all, You always get caught up in who starts early and who does all of this, and sometimes it's the guy that sits for a little while, and, and he may ha- end up having the best career out of all these guys. Let's remember, you draft a guy for a decade, not for their rookie year. Correct. So, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. A couple other quarterbacks to talk about, obviously Sam Darnold, uh, Lamar Jackson as well, probably played his best preseason game, so certainly we have more to get into there, but th- at least the starting out, Rosen doesn't play in this one. And Josh Allen has a tough outing when he got to go against the starters. And, and I'm glad they did it to give each right. one of those quarterbacks a start a, with the starting unit against the starting defense. And for Allen, didn't go all that well, but a lot of it wasn't his fault when he had all the pressure in his face. No question. So, again, uh, and 
at, the, at best, uh, an uneven performance from Josh Allen, and we'll see what happens. I still think he has a really good chance to be the starting quarterback going forward week one for the Buffalo Bills. I got Bills. questions for you about Lamar Jackson, oh. Sam Darnold. So we, we got we got some questions the, out here. The Lamar Jackson thing yep. is, is becoming interesting, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure it's anywhere near resolved. Coming up, Brett has some Dale Long facts for us. Okay. Of, cor- of course he does. Plus, at least one rookie quarterback has started in week one of an NFL season in 10 straight seasons. Well, you can make it 11 and you can book it. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, a great sports night last night, yeah. no doubt about it. And Wingo. What a day, what a show, what a time. One, two, three, four. To give batters a different look, pitchers throw a changeup. Your idea of a different look is sunglasses. That's true. But La Quinta Inns and Suites is really taking the different look thing to a new level. Definitely a major league makeover, starting with a bolder, brighter lobby full of comfortable spaces to let you settle in. Or chill out in front of a big, flat screen like Wingo would. Oh, you know it. It's a changing La Quinta look to help you get in the zone and look sharp when you hit that big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply. Golick. Golick and Wingo. And Wingo. Mm -hmm. Trey Wingo and Mike Golick Sr. Our guy is now making his appearance, and he's ready. We ready? We good to go? All right. Uh, We are delighted uh, to be joined on Golick and Wingo one more time by Tony Finau, coming off a second-place finish at the Northern Trust. Tony, how are you this morning? Hey, what's up, guys? I'm doing great. It was great to see you guys earlier in the week. Yeah, yeah it gave us a little cheers. <laughs> you went up to the, your tea time Friday morning. So listen, just so That's you know, right. as you we are joining us, you're joining us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Just so you know, we have already decided. Congratulations, you're on the Ryder Cup team. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I hope that's the case. But, uh, you know, all in all, it's been a it's been a fun year, and to be in the conversation, to be one of the captain's picks is, uh, is something that's pretty cool for me. It, it, listen, it has been a fantastic year for you. Just just kind of where are you, I guess, in that private moment and think, thinking about the possibility about being on the Ryder Cup team? Yeah, it's it's hard not to think about. You know, I, I try not to think about it too much. I know there's, you know there's still some golf to be played, and, you know, we're kind of having tryouts right now. <laughs> you know, there's a handful of us. I feel like that are in the conversation and I've gotten off to a great start here in the playoffs, but, uh, you know, I, it's, it'll be a dream come true. Um, you know, for me, not, not if it happens, just when, and you know, whether that's this year or in a couple of years, um, you know, I've put the work in and it's, it's just been fun to be part of that conversation. And, um, I know I bring a lot to the table when it comes to, you know, playing a tournament like that. And, um, you know, it'd be something that's just going to be really special for me when it happens. Again, we're talking to Tony Finau, finished second at 14 under in the Northern Trust this, this, uh, this past weekend. Go back though. We always talk about golf and, and the mental part of the game. Well, again, so there's this Ryder Cup thing hanging there in the PGA in the second round. You're golfing with Jim Furyk, a guy who's making the decision about with his <laughs> captain's pick. So what did, does that do to you mentally when you know you're, you're in obviously a major playing, you're trying to get on the Ryder Cup team, and there's the captain you're golfing with in the entire round? Yeah, exactly. There's always, it seems like there's always a lot of mental games inside of a game, you know, so it was, I was excited that, you know, I had the opportunity to just play in front of him and just show him my game, and, and I did my best to, uh, to just play, just play golf and, and enjoy the round. You know, I've, I've been playing great golf in the majors. And I look forward to playing the PGA Championship and to be paired with him. Uh, again, as you mentioned, the captain of the Ryder Cup was something that was just extremely cool for me. So I just I was happy to um, to be able to play well that second round. You know, I put together ten birdies in eighteen holes, and you know, obviously made a few mistakes. But just having just having to showcase my game in front of him well, was all I could ask for as far as like a trial run for for the Ryder Cup. So I played I played some great golf and. Uh, you know, and again, just hope, uh, you know, this, this Ryder Cup this year is a team that I'm a part of. 
Uh, Tony Fee now, PGA Tour professional, joining us uh, on Golik and Wingo this morning, coming off a second place finish at the Northern Trust. Uh, you, you know, you sort of, sort of just threw that in there. Yeah, I made ten birdies in that one round. Yeah. That was one of the most wild Crazy rounds, round. Tony, of all time. <laughs> I think you, you shot four under, and you had one par on the on the on your on your on the front side, right? You had, I, I yeah. think it was all birdies, eagles, a triple, and and then one par. I mean, did, were you having any conversation with Jim during that? Like, you know, I can do this at the Ryder Cup if you need. I can make every birdie <laughs> on every hole. Yeah, exactly. If you need the birdie girl is great match play. The good thing about match play is if you make a triple bogey, you only lost the hole. <laughs> um, yeah, he he was just shaking his head. You know, I made seven birdies in the first eight holes and and just got up to a blazing start. I needed to. I was disappointed in my play on Thursday, and I knew I needed to try and erase that deficit of, you know, a four over on Thursday right away. And so I was able to do that in the first four holes and, and just kept making my way, you know, towards the cut line. I wanted to make sure I played the weekend. And, you know, I, I ended up playing three rounds with him, not just two. We played, you know, we were paired together the first two rounds, and we both made the cut on the number. And so I was able to show him, you know, again on, on Saturday, you know, uh, you know, made a handful of birdies on Saturday and, and just continue to show him, you know, what my game is, is made of. Tony Finau with us, currently fourth in the FedEx Cup playoff points after a second-place finish at the Northern Trust, the first of the four PGA events, PGA Tour events, rather, that close out the year. Obviously, the Ryder Cup is very, very special. You're representing your country. It's a different dynamic for golfers, Tony, than anything else, where really it's an individual uh, thing you're playing for yourself out there. But what would mean yeah. more to you at this point, making the Ryder Cup team or winning the FedEx Cup? Because that does come with a nice little bonus of $10 million. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, you know, if I had a, if I had an answer, I, I would say, uh, winning the FedEx Cup, you know, just, I, it's a tough decision, you know, to have, you know, but to, I think winning the FedEx Cup is, uh, is a goal of mine. And to be able to accomplish that this year would be something that's really special and would mean, you know, I'd win a couple of playoff events coming up. So that'd be something that's really special. But, uh, you know, why not, why not have both, right? Well, I was just going to exactly. say, they're not mutually exclusive, so you is. can absolutely have them, have them both. We're talking to PGA Golfer Tony Finau, currently fourth in FedEx Cup playoff points rate, 18th in the official World Golf Rankings. Then, after this playoff is over, after the Ryder Cup is over, this little thing on the day after Thanksgiving, you have Tiger and Phil playing in a one-on-one -on -one match. So we're, we'll give you a million dollars in Monopoly money. You don't have to do your own money, but you have to bet it on, on one of them to win. Who are you betting it on? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys put me on the spot, huh? Um, I I want to ask I want to ask you guys the same question. Who do you guys got to win? Well, listen, I, I I think I think Tiger's already mentally won because they're playing at Shadow Creek where yeah. he holds the course record. So I, I think Tiger yeah. is going to win. Let, uh, let me put it this way to you: what what's the biggest? I don't mean money wise, but for that you guys do the side bets. That you guys do maybe do in your Tuesday Practice round. Rounds. So, what's one of the biggest side bets maybe that they'll do? What will they bet on? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, close to the pin will probably be a huge side bet. Um, I I talked to Phil, and this is a little insider. You know, I played with Phil the first uh, three rounds this week, and uh, you know he said they're going to be side wagering on a, on a, pretty much every shot. You know, whether it's a long drive, close to the pin, up and down, make this putt, miss that putt. So. Uh, there's going to be a lot of side betting going on, but uh, I would say close to the pin, they're probably going to have a lot of action on on the par threes. Oh yeah. So that's there's going to be it's going to be fun though. I think it's going to be uh, it's a different thing for the game of golf. You know, um, I'm not a huge fan that it's on pay per view to be honest, yeah. but I think it is a cool it is a cool thing and a different you know twist that they're putting on you know golf and just having it as a different entity of any of the golf entities that we have. You know, the RNA with the British Open, the PGA. Uh, you know, for the PGA Championship and, you know, the Masters is kind of exclusive. The U.S. Opens, the USGA. This is a whole different deal. You know, this is a this is a part of golf, you know, that kind of uncharted waters. So it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. But uh, it is going to be cool to watch as a golf fan. And I'm excited to see, you know, those two guys, you know, I, I watched and, and grew up uh, trying to be like on the golf course, and, you know, just battle it out. So you did a good job of spinning it to us on who, who we were going to pick to win and, and took the, the emphasis off of you. So does that mean you're not answering this one? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to sit this one out. But, there uh, you go. I, 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 <laughs> I, I like you guys sit too. I mean, I, you can't wrong with either one. Whoever's, I think whoever's sitting it better off the tee is probably going to win. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me ask you this one. Is your passport up to date? And have you ever been to France before? Yeah, I have once. 
and it was actually for the uh, the Ryder Cup practice just uh, the week before the British Open. There you go. So, uh, so just your, your travel plans are good. Your passport, good. your Passport's passport is up set. to date, right? All good, right? <laughs> I'll be I'll be ready to go when the time comes. So <laughs> okay. I'll just continue to I'll just I'll just continue to do my thing and 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 I'll be ready to go. Well, well look, that's awesome. And yeah, I, I do is. I do want to say one thing to you. I've had people inside golf texting me saying people are openly campaigning for you to be on the team. What does that mean when you hear that? Yeah, I think that means I'm doing some good things and you know earning the respect of you know maybe some of my peers, some of the people that follow the game, which is cool. But uh, you know, for me, it's it's been it's been a cool year. It's been a fun year. You know, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, uh, as, you know, as you would expect in anybody's professional career. But a lot more ups this year, and um, to be in that, again, just to be in that conversation is, is something that's been special to me. So I, you know, I want to continue to fin- you know finish well, uh, finish the playoffs right, and when that time you know comes to be you know to be picked or, or not be picked, it's you know it's not an it's not an end result for me. It's something that I definitely want to be a part of. But, you know, I'm continuing to get better, and that's all I can do. And, um, you know, let the chips fall where they may. Well, just so you know, on uh, Go Look and Wingo, it's the the eight automatics, and then it's uh, it's DeChambeau, it's Phil, it's Tiger, and it's you. We have made our picks for the yeah. Ryder Cup team, and you are on it. So congratulations from our team. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll take that as a win. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're the only one that's probably taking that as a win, but we appreciate that. <laughs> Listen, this, see, this is this is the kind of great stuff that happens from celebrating an ace by dislocating your ankle. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> why we wanted you on after that. You still made a top ten. You got back into uh, the Masters. Uh, uh. We are we are on the Tony Finau yes, Express, are. and we are not off until you are on that Ryder Cup team. Tony, we appreciate you being with us, and as soon as it's officially official, we'll have you back on, okay? No, I'd love to have it. Thanks, guys. You Thanks, got it, appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, a great sports night last night, yeah. no doubt about it. And Wingo. What a day, what a show, what a time. One, two, three, four. Chris Broke Canty from ESPN New York 98.7 joins us. We'll have Chris on the show every week on Thursdays to discuss the football season. How are we doing, Chris? I'm doing pretty good, guys. Other than having some technical difficulties up here at the studio, you know I was supposed to do the hit at 7.30, but it's hard to get into the studio when the studio door doesn't have a handle. <laughs> That's wow. probably true. Wow, that does make it difficult, doesn't it? You had to improvise. There you go. But, you know, we live by Rule 76, no excuses, play like a champion. So I had to find a way to make sure I could come on with you guys, and it's better late than never. That's well exact, done. That's exactly well right. Done. That's that Virginia yeah. education serving Chris Candy well. All right, Chris, first and foremost, uh, the one thing that came out of the game over the weekend for the Jets and the Giants, injury to Olivier Vernon, high ankle sprain, they're saying maybe. What are you hearing? Well, I mean, that's the thing. The Giants don't have a whole lot of pass rushers, so if OV gets nicked up, the Giants are going to be in serious trouble just because their defense doesn't have a lot of pressure edge guys, and they don't have a lot of depth. So if that Giants defense can't put pressure on the quarterback, that's going to put stress on the guys on the back end. So it's going to be tough to kind of com- to be competitive this season without a healthy Olivier Vernon. First game is against Jacksonville, then at Dallas, at Houston. I just won three games because high ankle sprains, as you all know, Chris, those are those can be tough to deal with, and they can be slow to come back from, especially with a guy that uh, has quickness as a big part of his game. And speaking of quickness and speaking of a great player, Odell Beckham Jr. has not been on the field because of the uh, the contract. It, it, all signs seem to be pointing toward that getting done. Are you hearing the same thing in week one? Do you expect him on the field? Yeah, well, he had a tweet earlier last week, and it said timing is everything. So I suspect that they've, they're they pretty close to agreeing to a deal in principle, and I think that they're just probably going through the minutia, some of the language in the contract now. But I have all confidence that the Giants and Beckham's camp, they're going to get this deal done ahead of the Week 1 matchup with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So what does that mean specifically for what uh, this team is trying to accomplish on offense? Because he missed, what, 12 games last year. They have a revamped offensive line, they believe. Saquon Barkley and that hamstring are finally healed. How potentially dangerous will this offense be if Saquon is as advertised, Odell is Odell, and the offensive line has been upgraded for the Giants? Well, Trey, I'm expecting this to be one of the most explosive offenses in the league, and in part it's because they have to be in order to be competitive and win games. We talked about the OV injury in the third preseason game against the Jets. I mean, this defense... When you look at it on paper, it's not going to be very good, especially the pass defense. You've seen some early struggles with linebackers and guys on the back end being able to cover. It hasn't looked very good. So I suspect that the Giants offense is going to have to win them a lot of games just going through shootouts. It's going to have to be a top five scoring offense if the Giants want to get to where they want to be, which is in the postseason. 
As far as what you've seen from this, and one of the parts that we knew had to be better was going to be the offensive line. Revamped on the left side with Nate Solder and uh, the rookie and Will Hernandez. What have you seen out of that line to give Giant fans any kind of hope that, yes, the running game can be better? Because I don't care how good Saquon Barkley is, if there's no holes to run, there's nowhere to go. Well, they, they spent a lot of money and draft capital in the offseason to try to rebuild the offensive line. You got four new starters from a year ago, but it's important that that group tries to try to get as many reps as they possibly can. And I think Pat Shermer has been trying to do that with those guys during the preseason just so they can develop that chemistry. More so than any group, it's about chemistry with the offensive line. And so when you look at the guys that they have, I feel confident about what they're going to be able to do on the left side of that line. But Patrick Amame and Eric Flowers, they haven't looked very good throughout this preseason, so that's still something that you have to keep an eye on. But the offensive line has to be an upgrade from what they had a year ago. Chris Canny with us does a great job for us on our ESPN New York 98.7 FM station. Also, of course, a, uh, a draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys, Super Bowl champ uh, with the New York Giants and finished his career with the Ravens. Uh, Chris, let's go to the other team in New York. That would be the Jets. Uh, we're all expecting Darnold to be that guy, right? So uh, if Sam Darnold is this, by the way, just so I'm clear, do you believe Darnold will be the starter week one? Yeah, I think Bono's going to be the starter week one. All signs point toward it. Uh, I, I think that Mike McCagnan and Ty Bowles feel confident enough about what they've seen from him throughout the preseason that it's not too big for him. I think he can handle it. And he showed that on Friday night, starting that game against the Giants. And, and just with the opening drive, the balance that they were able to have, run the pass, and then, of course, the critical plays that he made on that drive, a third and 13 in the fringe area. He steps up in the pocket. Nothing's there. He decides he's going to take off and scramble, converts for the first down. The very next play at the line of scrimmage, recognizing the coverage, is able to hit the out route to Robbie Anderson. He lofts it perfectly over the head of the outside linebacker, who's the curl flat defender, and in front of the corner. That converts another first down, and then Bilal Powell punches it in for a touchdown. But Sam Donald being able to make those plays, even the plays that are off schedule, I think that's the difference for him and for this Jets team. From a potential standpoint, he definitely has the most upside of any quarterback that they have on the roster. I'm not going to lie to you. I was really impressed with that breakdown of that one drive, Chris. Uh, you, <laughs> you overwhelm me with information. Uh, well, but, well, I mean, but Trey, that's what yeah. you're looking for, right? That's yes. what you're looking for from a young quarterback. You want to see those things because he doesn't have a lot of talent in terms of the skill position players that's going to be able to carry him. So he's going to have to elevate the play of a lot of guys on that team, on that side of the right. ball. And that's the difference. You want a quarterback that's going to help you be competitive and I'm not saying that the Jets are going to compete for a playoff spot but this year is all about the development of Sam Donald and the more experience that he gets the better that he's going to be and you're going to see that kind of productivity on a more consistent basis so Chris with that in mind what do you think happens to Teddy Bridgewater well I think the Jets are probably going to end up holding on to Teddy Bridgewater until a market develops for him to be able to move him I don't think that you're going to trade him because he's looked really, I don't think you're going to cut him because he looked really good throughout the preseason. So you hold on to him and I, I don't want to be a negative person, but you hold on to him until something happens with an injury at the quarterback position with one of the other 31 teams. And then you see if you can get a draft pick form, but you have to be able to get something back for Teddy Bridgewater because you took the risk and it was a great move by Mike McCagden. You only invested $500,000 in guaranteed money. Now it bumps up to 5 million if he's on the roster, but this this is one of those moves that the Jets can get back a draft pick. And keep in mind, they traded away three second-round draft picks to move up to get Sam Donald. So hopefully they can get a mid- or late-round draft pick in return for Teddy Bridgewater. Interesting if they hang on to him, taking up that roster spot right. you know, for another guy that could use in special teams or something. We'll see where that goes. Hey, Chris, about a minute to go. 25 helmet penalties in the first preseason, uh, second preseason week, 26 this past nine. What do you make of that? Well, I think that the, uh, the referees, they're trying to make a point of the new rules. And, you know, they do this all the time, Mike. There's going to be an emphasis on the new rules in the rule book. But I, I suspect that this is not going to be called the way that they called in the preseason once we get to the regular season. I think they just want to make players aware of it so they can adjust their game. And Al Riveron and the officials, they're going to make a point of it now. But once we get to the regular season, I think you'll see some of that go away. Because let's be honest, nobody's paying to see laundry on the field from the officials. We want to see football. Uh, we certainly do, and we saw less of that laundry on the field in week three, which was the dress rehearsal. You have to think it's a dress rehearsal for, for the, the rest, officials yeah. as much as it is for the players. Chris Candy, you are an American hero. Door locked, I'll find a way. He found a way to get in and be on with us this morning. Thanks, big man. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Golick. 
and Wingo. Let's not expect too much. There's only one person out there that's expecting way too much out of this guy too early. We know who that is. It's his father. Remember when you couldn't order a ride at the press of a button? Or get online without hearing this? Or get Domino's delivered to over 150,000 unexpected outdoor locations? Wait, what? Introducing Domino's Hotspots. You can finally get pizza delivered right to the beach, the quad, or the dog park. Not at home? Not a problem. Find a Domino's Hotspot near you and get two medium, two-topping pizzas delivered for $5.99 each. Two at a minimum handmade pan pizzas will be extra asked for this limited time offer. Prices for participation delivery area and charges may vary. Restrictions apply. Visit Domino's.com for details on Domino's Hotspots. Golick. Golick and Wingo. And Wingo. Mm-hmm. Trey Wingo and Mike Golick Sr. Damien Woody in studio. Giving us the Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contract. Straight Talk. How much are you down now? Oh, uh, like 33? Good for you, man. Yeah. So Good for you. Good job, I'm you. Trying to, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get to Golick's level, man. What is it about offensive and defensive linemen? They all want to be underwear models. I don't quite Well, <laughs> because we were never close to that while we were playing. Yeah. It, it would, it'd be nice. It's nice to it would be nice to be looked at and thought, oh, you look good instead of, holy smokes, that's yeah. a large human yeah, being. Yeah, you're, boy, you are big in. By the way, <laughs> did you ever catch any flack for your, about the, when you, when you said that on our show about the, the good golf shot sometimes is as good as sex? Did, did that come back to haunt you at all? I think my wife, she, yeah. my wife was like, that's what, what I kind of meant. Like, yeah. Wait a minute. What, yeah. What's this all about? What, uh-huh. what are you? What are you saying? Yeah. Here? So I kind of had to weasel my way out of that a little yeah. bit. I'm like, hey, it's just radio. Yeah. You we, know? we didn't that's think all. we didn't think it was going to go well for you. On that yeah. One, everybody you know? else and that's why had yeah. to kick out, <laughs> and that's why we continue to play it. Yeah. yeah. We all laughed at it because right. we didn't have to go home and talk right. to the wife. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. So we seamlessly move from that topic onto football. <laughs> uh, that might have been a bad look for you. Is it a bad look that the Raiders are shopping Khalil Mack? Wow. What's going on there? I mean, this is a guy two years ago who was first team All Pro, not Pro Bowl, first team All Pro, which means he was the best at his position in two positions on the defensive end. You know, when I first heard like the the, the rumblings, I'm yeah. like, are the Raiders like broke or something? Do they not have the cash to, to pay Khalil Mack? And boy, in football, you got to have a couple things. You got to have a quarterback and guys that get after the quarterback. And in Khalil Mack, you definitely have. One of the top, you know, two or three pass rushers in the National Football League. And granted, as good as he is, the Raiders' defense still, they still were awful. So I, I, I'm assuming that's where John Gruden is coming from, but these guys don't come around that often. He's yeah. literally like one of the best pass rushers in this generation. I, 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 I just don't understand it. I'm trying to think of, and we can, we can do that. Brett can help. Any of the teams that have a quarterback who has a mega deal, the next biggest contract, because you're talking Derek Carr has a monster deal. Now you're talking about a guy in Khalil Mack who probably make at least 20 million a year. These guys and the Aaron Donald deal we hear is getting close, maybe around 22 million a year. These guys are getting what used to be quarterback money. Right. But now, but, but golf hasn't, doesn't have that deal yet with the Rams. So I wonder how many teams have the quarterback with the monster deal and another player with a monster deal because that's a position the Raiders would be in. We'll see where that thing goes. How about the third preseason game? And Sean McVay has already said his Ram, their starters basically aren't playing. How about the Bears? They pulled this one off. Kind of a late announcement. Now, again, this is their fourth preseason game. Yes. Saying that's their important starters, that for is, people to understand. That right. their starters weren't going to play. And a lot of people losing their minds. Me not being one of them. I completely get it. I don't have a problem with it. Do you have a problem with the Bears not playing their starters in, in what was would have been their fourth preseason game? No, I game? don't. No, I, it, absolutely. And I think you hit on the key point. The fact that it's their fourth. They played in the Hall of Fame game. And I know the fans were just, you know, seemed like they were up in arms about that. But you got to understand what's more important to play in a fourth preseason game for the Bears or get your guys to week one. Exactly. I mean, that, you know, that's what it's really ultimately all about. Yes, you got to, in order to get better at football, you got to play football. But ultimately, you got to get your starters to week one. So I, I completely understand where the Bears are coming from in that regard. Yeah, and again, remember, an extra preseason game means an extra week of practice as That's well. Right. We don't just, it's not the, the, the postseason or the preseason, it's not just games, it's practice as well, and they have had an extra week of practice. Yeah, and this all started, uh, Dan Pompeo, who does a great job, put this out there on Twitter, said, Bears are not playing their starters, I don't like it a bit, football players need to play football. To get better at playing football, you can be smart about trying to minimize injuries but not scared. It says the wrong message to players and the fans who bought tickets. Again, couldn't disagree this, more. Well, first of all, it's their yeah. fourth preseason game. It's right. not their third preseason exactly. game. Right. So that's what really makes the whole yeah. thing moot. But on the on the fans part of it, first of all, 
people have to buy those tickets in yeah, the preseason because if you don't buy the preseason tickets, don't get the, you don't get, don't get your get regular, regular season. season. So let's right. understand what that is, right. okay? And then thirdly, if you're really a fan of the team, are you upset that they're not in their in what would be their fourth preseason game as opposed to having a avoiding an injury where oh, they would be out for the first three weeks of the season? That's right. No. no, right? No. So just come on, that makes no sense whatsoever. None of that made any sense to me. So I'm glad you guys agreed. Um, all right, it seems like Sam Darnold's all in. Yeah. Um, what have you seen that you like, and maybe what are you most concerned about? Because everybody has things that they love in preseason, and then the regular season rolls around, and sometimes it goes a little bumpier. I think that it, it just hasn't been too much for him. I, it, going into this thing, I think the Jets organization wanted Sam Darnold to be the starting quarterback, and what he sh- what he's shown thus far is that he can handle everything that's been thrown out. They didn't hold back the playbook or anything like that. They literally threw everything at him to see if he could handle it, and he's been doing that in the games, managing the game, uh, you know, different looks defensively. He's just really been checking all the boxes for the Jets, so – He's going to be the week one starter. The one thing I worry about as far as Sam Donald's concerns is the offensive line. Yeah. The offensive line for the Jets has been, you know, a little shaky. I worry about protection, all those type of things. But the one thing that Sam Donald brings to the table, more so than probably any other rookie quarterback, is his pocket presence. This this dude has it as far as pocket presence and knowing how to uh, you know, elude, you know, pass rushes and all those type of things. So he, he's on his way. He's yeah. on his way to be the starter. Yeah, he looks good. That first drive went down for a touchdown. Five of the next six were three and outs. Numbers-wise, it wasn't his greatest night at 8 or 16 going against the first-string defense. But I agree with you. He has, at this point, and you have to look at the team as a whole and where they're going to let's start this guy's clock because he seems to be able to handle the presence in the pocket. That team and the Baltimore Ravens. Some of the big talk has been our both teams – one team, no team, going to keep three quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson had his best outing, so do we think that's the end of RG3? So for both those teams, do you think they keep three quarterbacks or will either Teddy Bridgewater or RG3 be available? Well, I think uh, I think for both teams you keep three quarterbacks. You do? Uh, you do. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, the, he, he's really played fantastic. Yes, he you, can, you can make the case he's, he's outplayed Sam Donald in the preseason. And if you're the Jets, you don't just give away Teddy Bridgewater. A lot right. of times you have to wait until an injury to a starter happens, and then that's when the value of a Teddy Bridgewater comes up in a potential trade. Uh, but in regards to the Baltimore Ravens, yes, Lamar Jackson has gotten better. But my question is, well, this is a two-part deal. My question is, would you be comfortable enough if, if something were to happen to Joe Flacco, him being the starter? I don't would think you? It, no, I would not be. Um, he's just not there yet. He's more athlete than quarterback mm-hmm. right now. And two – RG3 has had a pretty good preseason. He's played that very that, well. That's, I think that's really been under the radar as far as chatter this preseason, but RG3 has really played pretty well this preseason. And if I'm Baltimore, I'm keeping him. He, he's the guy I would feel more comfortable with if something were to happen with Joe Flacco. Yeah, I, I, think, I wonder if I both those right. players would like to be gone, though. Yeah, and like to have the opportunity with another team. Well, you know, I think for RG three, and we we had him on. He, he just wants a taste of the of the league yeah. again after being out. I think he's. I think honestly for him, he's happy to be wherever he is and take it going forward. What has P? What and we've got great answers. What have you snuck into food wise or drink wise to a theater? <sighs> Don't I tell mean, me I, you haven't. I haven't. Get, Get out, out of here! Honestly, that's it. Seriously, You're off the show. honestly, You're off the show. I've. I've I played by the book on that. Oh man! I, man. I, yeah, well, you I think played you know by the guy. book. You think you know a guy? And he pulls something really? like that. Really? So yeah, true. I, I, yeah. I, so you spent good ten in- bucks for a Mike and Ike's box. <laughs> <laughs> and bring in, yeah. I, go to the dollar store. You get it for a dollar. Oh my god! Yeah, it's bad. Man. All right, we, it's we, bad. We, we need to we need to coach up on that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, that's yeah. why purses are big and coats are important. Mm-hmm. That's very uh, true. Golik and Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The big man Damian Woody joining us in studio, our NFL analyst. Of course, he was a first round selection by the New England Patriots in two thousand ninety nine. Ninety nine. It was mm-hmm. off by a year. Damn it. Sorry. Anyway, so as you know, Tom Brady does a weekly radio hit uh, with WEEI up in Boston. You might recall that on July 28th, uh, when Julian Edelman was uh, found out about his four-game suspension and that he worked with Alex Guerrero, somebody asked Tom at the end of a practice, hey, you know, is there anything to be concerned about with Edelman working with Alex Guerrero? And he's suspended. And Tom's like, that's a ridiculous question. I'm out. I'm out. Didn't want to talk about it. Well, uh, over the weekend, apparently Alex Guerrero is personal trainer, TB12, all that kind of stuff that Tom works with. You know, there have been some 
some bad blood between them last year. That was obvious between the Patriots and Bill Belichick and, and Guerrero. But he was back, apparently, on the sidelines and flying on the team plane. So during the interview, they asked about it. It went as well as when they asked him on July 28th. He had said in his opinion that, that all this stuff had been overblown, that he and Belichick actually had a pretty good relationship even then. Would you say that was true? I said I don't want to get into it. Okay. Go ahead, Evan. Yeah. I so, mean, everyone knows it's well documented how, you know, the work that he and I do together. No, I know. I No, no. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out because I saw the reports this weekend that he's traveling with the team. Was he on the sideline on Friday? Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. And I'm out. I and love the, how we wait till the dial tone. Wait till the dial tone. Dramatic effect. Okay, so you hear that, you say what? It's kind of sensitive, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. it'd be one thing if, if if Alex Guerrero Guerrero wasn't affiliated with a team when he's kind of like off doing his own thing. Maybe I can get it, but the fact that flying on a team plane on the sidelines. So now you're he's back in you know back in the Patriots mix. So to me, that's like fair game, right? If you think about it, fair question. It's to a ask. fair. It's a fair. I don't think that. I don't think there was anything there that was malicious. Just asking a question about the status of his trainer, as, you know, as it relates to the Patriots organization. Yeah. I, I think, uh, and I talked about this earlier from a player side or a coach's side. There's two ways you can go. You can either answer all the questions and hope you're done with it. Or you can do what Tom did and say, I'm not going to talk about it and really make your mark that says, I'm not. And I guess the issue of the other side of answering questions, if you start to answer questions, then does the media go to other members of the team and say, hey, you were with Alex Guerrero as well. What do you think? Tom said this. What are your thoughts? So and you just wonder, does it all just keep going? And as I said a while ago, once the season gets going for New England, they are in one mode, as you well know. Right. And everything else is secondary, third, fourth, or non-existent to them. And that seems to be the way Tom is playing it. But the one thing I look, the way I look at it is, when you take the approach that Tom takes, now it, it starts to become a story again because people's like, wait a minute, what, what's you that know, about? What's, what, what is what is up with this? Like. I don't think the interviewer asked anything that was crazy. He just asked a yeah. simple question about, you know, oh, you know, your trainer is flying with the team on the yeah. sideline. You know, where does this, where, what's the status of this relationship? And to me, it just, it adds fuel to the fire again. It brings it back to the forefront again when you, when you, you know, make that type of move. I guess well, an easy answer yeah. would be everything is fine. I'm not going to discuss it Correct. anymore, but, but, you know, he's on the plane, he's on the sideline, all good. Well, let, let me know. ask, let me ask you this, Damien, because, because you know how it works in New England. There's one voice there, and that's Bill Belichick. Right. And it was pretty clear this offseason that Tom was making some statements. I plead the fifth when he thought he was respected by the organization, missed voluntary workouts for the first time. Uh, listen, maybe this is his way of saying, guys, I'm here, I'm playing, we all know how this is going to work. And I don't want to. I don't want to do anything to ruffle the feathers for anybody. Is that a fair way to look at it? Yeah, I mean, listen. I instead of hanging up, I, to me, I would have been like, you know what? I'm just here to talk about the the team. I'm yeah. not here to talk about the trainer. Just you, try to keep the focus on because it's what's clear really this important. Is something with him. Yeah, right? I mean, when you get to the point where you're just hanging up and all that type of stuff, it's just it keeps it keeps uh, keeps being a story. And to me, that's an issue. When you were in that locker room, first, did you have any issues that were were national that that kept coming up in the locker room? And, and second, do all the do players discuss it amongst yourselves on what direction you're going to go, or is it just kind of assumed when you're in that locker room? Well, number one, you all, you know, when it the, the only issue that I had that we had as a team was when like when Lloyd Malloy got cut that for, that mm-hmm. week one. Yeah. That was a big deal. And you deal. lost thirty one to nothing. And to we Buffalo. Want, lost thirty one yeah. nothing to Buffalo and people were like, oh, is you know, has Bill Belichick <laughs> lost the team and all those type of things. So that that was a potential issue. But a lot of times I always say that players regurgitate what the coach said. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's the way we that's the way we take it. Well listen, my favorite thing about that is you lost that first game in Buffalo thirty one to nothing. Final game of the regular season, Patriots hosting Buffalo you guys beat them thirty one. Yeah, <laughs> I I have to believe in some way when they get we they were figuring the math. Let's just end it there. Let's That's just, right. Let's just make sure we end it thirty one to nothing. <laughs> exactly. The exact opposite of how we started the season thirty one to nothing. Big man, always good to have Thanks, you on Jamie. the show. Yeah, Appreciate man, same. That. 
Kulik. Uh, I tell you what, a great sports night last night, yeah. no doubt about it. And Wingo. What a day, what a show, what a time. One, two, three, four. Oh, Marty, Marty, Marty. Glad you're with us, Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line, including our next guest. He is the world's most interesting. Man. This is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I the story we're about to talk about. I I saw it all, saw the pictures and everything, but I had no idea Marty Fish was involved. Of in course, that. he is. Because Marty, stunning. Marty has a story about every athlete because he's that guy that just hangs around with air quotes other athletes. And we're delighted to be joined now by Marty Fish, our ESPN tennis analyst, who will be covering the U.S. Open for us for the next couple of weeks. Marty, how are you, pal? I'm doing well. Did Cliff really have to play that that clip coming oh. in? Did we really need that. I think we did. I, Marty, think, I think we needed Marty. it more than you know. We are the pettiest show in America, Marty. So yeah. yes, we had to do it. All right. So, so <laughs> we'll get in. We'll get into the U.S. Open in a minute. But for those that don't know, <laughs> you're you're boys with Justin Verlander. You guys have been friends for a long time, and you guys went out to what was it brunch somewhere in Los Angeles? <laughs> well, we went to. I mean, I was up at five a.m. I have two kids. Yeah. He woke up at noon because. He's, He's a baseball player. Exactly. So <laughs> we were we were wanting to have I wanted to have lunch and he's like I got it you know and I want I wanted to go you know sugar fish maybe some sushi something like that and he's like I need breakfast I need breakfast so he had a place to go so we ended up going to the Beverly Hills hotel sounds super posh and it is wow and uh and and so we go there and and his lovely wife Kate comes with us and uh they tell me that this salad is like this, you know, is a great order, the salad. And, and when I say it is chopped, I mean, it is finely chopped. Salad. It's a $42 salad. Why is it $42? Good, right? Why is it $42? It's so thin, it is so thinly chopped that you, you, could, you would understand when you saw this thing. Wait a minute. Also, I'm looking at this bill. Okay, two eggs, any style with meat is $28 and one pancake <laughs> One pancake, mind you, is thirty dollars. How the hell can they justify that? It was one order of pancakes. I didn't order the pancakes. Justin ordered the pancakes. It was three pancakes, and he didn't finish them okay. because okay, he had I the see one pancake. Well, I mean, You're right. Okay. Like, but that was my cranberry juice because they were fashionably late. So that was my ten dollar cranberry. Juice. <laughs> wow. A ten dollar cranberry juice again. Both you and Justin tweeted the bill, and the one thing that got our oh, attention. This is awesome. It says one open miscellaneous Dodger killer one million dollars that's awesome let's explain <laughs> it was funny i know they put the bill next to me and i'm thinking you know because i saw the salad was 42 bucks so they put it next to me and i'm thinking like how do i get this over to justin you know <laughs> he's sitting in between kate and i how can i slide this over to him and so i open it and i thought it was i i just thought it was like a you know just an error or something like that and we didn't see the the thing that was circled and the manager came over and 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 was super nice and it was really funny and he uh, and he said, "Look, you know, I'm a Dodger fan, and and blah blah blah. And congratulations on your, you know, Kate's pregnant. So congratulations on your upcoming pregnancy. And and um, and there there you have it. And so and so and I he wasn't even going to take a picture of it or anything. I was like, dude, you got it. You got to right. put that out. That's Absolutely. really funny. That was really funny. And they ended up comping the meal and stuff. So it was so we didn't have to pay the ten bucks. It was a really nice." Uh, Really nice thing by them. So I guess that was that was my next question. Did they comp the meal? And if they did, did you order more? <laughs> <laughs> that was at the end. That was at the end. Justin had to jump on a jump in a car to get to Anaheim, you know, because he had to he had to pitch the next day. So he had to uh, he had to throw about I don't know maybe twenty balls or something like that. He had to throw. So <laughs> a tough day uh, for him. He had a rough day that day. Yeah. All right. So so what was his reaction when he saw it for the first time? He thought it was funny. I mean, look, it, it was it was funny. I mean, we had he had to come over to kind of show it to us or whatever. But the Dodger killer thing got him for sure. Yeah, it was Again, very cool. It was pretty funny for them to do that. Yeah. Mar- exactly, Marty Fish, our ESPN tennis analyst, and also the world's most interesting man because he knows everybody and hangs out with yeah. everybody in sports with us. This morning, he was with Justin Verlander when they gave him that bill for a million bucks for being a Dodger killer and what he did in the World Series. And or, went, or was Justin with me? I mean, come on. Oh, oh, see, there you go. Hold on. Let me pull my Mike Golick. Well played. Ah, there you ah. go. That, that's certainly one way of looking <laughs> at it. Ah. All right, so, Marty, uh, listen, all, all that aside, you are at, at uh, Flushing for the start of the U.S. Open. If I said to you, I'll take Joker, Fed, and Nadal, and you can have everyone else to win the men's title, how secure am I in taking those three? Um, I would actually do you one more and say I'll give you three to one on the and you take the field and I'll take Djokovic. That's mm, how well just that guy's Joker. Wow. Right now. You, you, so you feel that strong about Joker right now? 
that guy is back to his 2011, 2012 form. The guy is absolute, is an absolute beast right now. He's not missing. Uh, he's fit. He's confident again. Um, you know, that was really the main thing was his confidence level. Uh, could he get through big matches? Could he get through big tournaments uh, match after match? We saw that at Wimbledon, him winning his fourth Wimbledon title, and then he backs it up in the summer winning Cincinnati. So he's my pick uh, uh, by, by a good bit um, right now. The courts are playing a little slow, uh, slower than normal here as well. Uh, he fell into Roger's section. That was one of the main things. He's the sixth seed, so he was going to fall into someone's quarter um, and the worst possible outcome for Roger Federer. Uh, Novak Djokovic falling in his quarter, um, you know, and they would play if they made it uh, all the way. Although Roger's got a tough draw as well. He would play Nick Kyrgios in the third round if they both got there. So tough draw for Roger and, and um, you know, but I really, honestly, I see uh, Nadal is maybe one of the only ones that can beat him on this type of surface. And then someone that kind of takes the racket out of his hand. We saw that uh, a guy like uh, Stan Walrinka in the final of the French Open, how he beat Novak uh, uh, there and, and, you know, maybe someone like John Isner or Kevin Anderson, how, you know, kind of serving, serving him off the court and taking the racket out of his hand. That's really the only way I think he loses. You know, you know, Marty, the, the, we obviously know the career of, of Roger Federer and, and what he's had. But in the last couple of years, we've talked about him even more because at his age, what he has been able to do, though Father Time always wins in this do we are we starting to see that? Do we think with Roger Federer? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think we just see a, there's a couple just nasty matchups for Roger, and and one of them is Novak on a medium to slow paced hard court. Um, there's no holes when you play someone like Novak Djokovic when he's on his game, uh, when he's fit, uh, when he can run everything down. He plays the ball so deep, uh, changes direction on both sides so well. So. For someone like Roger, that's a that's a really tough matchup. But when when Novak isn't there, um, when the courts are a little bit quicker, uh, Roger is my favorite. I mean, if this if 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 even still, and if if this is a a, a faster surface, um, I would I would tend to lean Roger's way. So no, I mean it's it's not happening now. Usually it does happen. Roger's thirty seven years old, just turned this summer, so. Um, I don't see him slowing down uh, anytime soon. Marty Fish with us. We'll get to the women's side in a minute, but real quickly, are you surprised that Roger Federer has not won the U.S. Open since 2008? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, from the mighty Roger, that's, uh, that seems like quite a long time. I mean, he went, you know, he went that three or four years there where he didn't win a Grand Slam, and he thought, man, is he done? Is he never going to do it again? And then all of a sudden he wins three. So right. uh, you can never count him out. Um you know, the greatest player of all time uh, for now uh, because, uh, you know, Novak Djokovic has 13 slams. Rafa's at 18, uh, you know, so they're, these guys are catching up and Roger needs to stop them uh, from uh, passing him. On the women's side, uh, look, last year was an amazing U.S. Open. The semifinals were all four young uh, American tennis players on the women's side. Sloane Stevens went on to win. How do you see it shaking up on the women's side right now? Yeah, it wasn't that cool last year. It was great. Uh, not only we had you uh, <laughs> on our on our set, but uh, uh, we had four women in the fi- in the semifinal, which was really cool. Uh, and and none of them were Serena or Venus. Or, I'm sorry, just none of them were Serena. So so you know, Madison Keys making the final. Sloane Stevens has had an unbelievable year. She's up to three in the world, her career high. Um, you know, she's had a nice summer as well. Simone Halep. Uh, is number one in the world. She plays a tough opponent in the first round. Uh, she, if you remember last year, she played Sharapova in the first round. Uh, you have Serena who's seated 17, and she's on that top half. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, uh, t- you know, she's in the third round, uh, third round section with her sister Venus. So uh, this is uh, it's going to be another interesting Wimbledon was such an interesting women's uh, uh, championships with all the seeds going out and just not knowing uh, how that was going to fall and. And, and, you know, so this is – you can't predict the women's side uh, for sure uh, uh, as much as you can the men. Marty, just because everybody expects greatness from Serena all the time, her coming back from uh, having her first child, are people surprised that she hasn't kind of hit her stride yet and, and probably what we should have expected at this point? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, she had a, a tough summer. Uh, she she hadn't played very well, um, you know, coming in. She lost fairly early in San Jose and Cincinnati. So 
she doesn't have the matches, but that has never really stopped her. I mean, she, you know, she made the finals of Wimbledon, um, you know, so she's, you know, she's always, it seems like she's the one to beat, um, but she needs to play her way into the tournament. I mean, like I said, I mean, winning breeds winning and, and she hasn't won very much recently. So, um, you know, so we'll see how that, how that goes and it should be, should be pretty fun to watch. Well, you are the world's most interesting man. There's no question about it. Whether it's dealing with, with <laughs> tennis or uh, having to lay down a million-dollar tad, that the entire thing was comped anyway with Justin Verlander. Marty, have a great time at the U.S. Open. They say it's the toughest test in tennis, as you well know. Say hi to Stubbsy and the gang for me, all right? I will, guys. I paid the tip, by the way. Oh, good oh, for you. Good job out of you, Good Marty. for you, Where'd Marty. You uh, Marty Fish with us uh, this morning. The tip had to be like a normal bill for something else. Again, yeah. two eggs with meat, yeah. $28. Sure. One order of pancakes, of which there were three. Probably the size $30, of $30, yeah. so that's $10 per pancake. Yep. The McCarthy salad, whatever that is, which-, which Finely which, chopped, Mike. Which Marty finely was chopped. raving about it being finely yeah. chopped. I don't care how well you chop it, yeah. it was $42. Yeah. And there were two of those. He had a cranberry drink, and that was 10 bucks. Yeah. And then I think they had a couple of things called Green Envies on there, some other drinks or something. And then that million-dollar Dodger Holy killer. smokes. I know I'm not going to eat there. Marty, I mean, the food may yeah. be great. Yeah. More power to you. Marty runs and rarefied it. This has been the best of Golik and Wingo podcast. You can listen or subscribe on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or just ask your smart speaker to play Golik and Wingo. Plus, you can check the guys out live weekday mornings from 6 to 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN News. When it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need help getting to your short list of qualified candidates fast. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screener questions, then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. And when you need to hire fast, accelerate your results with sponsored jobs. New users can try for free at Indeed.com slash podcast. That's Indeed.com slash podcast. Terms, conditions, and quality standards apply.